Hello class, this is Professor Tweed. In the last video we looked at how to do a rendering without any shadows turned on, um, which again you can do in many softwares, and if you want to render it in a different software and copy and paste it into your image, that's perfectly fine too. Um, and now we're going to look at doing shadows only, which is the reverse, so that way we can control the materials and the shadows sort of independently. Um, so for now I'm just going to sort of hide the layer that I just pasted in here, and I'm going to go back to my, my 3D model, and of course if I'm going to I'm going to go to the, my 3D tab in my scene, and if I'm going to just do shadows only, what I need to do is turn on my shadows back on. And um, now, right now we have shadows and materials. What I really want is just shadows. And so to turn off materials, what you, you're going to do is you're going to come over to your 3D tab, and you're going to go over to your materials only button, which is this one right here, and we can eyeball off all of the materials. It might take a few seconds to turn off the various materials. and the, the interesting thing about this is it's um, when we get to materials that we really start to see what it's going to do is just get, it's just going to turn the materials white so it's going to take all those settings that we did for for the materials and um, uh, you know give them this sort of white color here yeah this is sort of turning yellowish because it's my background and I might go and adjust that too so we can see as I click and click and click my midi my uh, images getting rid of materials one after the other and when I get through all of these materials it will just be shadows and lighting turned on basically so there we go and again this is basically white and it worked pretty well but if I really want to make it more white I might go back to my all my tabs here and go to my environment and uh, I might change my color here to white say okay actually no it would uh, make this more uh, white even as I could come up to here and uncheck my IBL which probably makes it too dark or I could just reset IBL and it's going to make it sort of more on the whitish and grayish tune and I can play with this bar to sort of get shadows in lighting to about where I want it again to sort of get a whitish color the light yellow color that I had for my IBL really would be fine I'm just sort of showing you extra controls and so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to render this guy and it'll be basically shadows and white so I'll give this a pause and we'll come back when my shadows are coming through but you can already see the nice quality of rendering that Photoshop does that you can't get from from SketchUp per se but you can do the same thing in SketchUp it's just not going to be quite have the same level of shadowing and lighting effects and you can you can often do this in other materials some softwares don't give you the all white sort of background which really makes this work so so getting shadows only becomes a little more difficult but certainly from SketchUp and there's many others that you can sort of get this look from as well so anyway as I say this has uh, got a lot of time there, so I'll pause this and come back when the shadows are done. All right, so here we go. The shadows are done rendering, or the lighting is done rendering. It really does look great, so much better than SketchUp in, I'd say, many software. So here we go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select everything and copy it like I would normally, and I'll, I'll paste that in to save it, and I'm going to sort of zoom in here and move it around, make sure it's aligned with... Uh, my uh, original drawing and I'm going to turn on materials and in this case my materials is on the layer above but what I really want to do is pull my shadows up above and I'm going to change the name of my later layers here because this could get a lot of layers as you move forward I'm going to make sure it's clear so call that shadow shadow one and the material only one just materials just so I know and you'll see right now because I have shadows above the materials the shadow is blocking it out now there's a great trick in um, Photoshop that works on many different levels and will definitely work for any software you might pull it in. If you pull it from, say, from SketchUp and you do shadows only, the whole thing's going to be white. Nonetheless, you can go up to your blending modes, which is this bar right here, and I'm going to switch it to multiply. And what multiply does is it, it basically takes everything that's white and makes it transparent, and everything that's black makes it opaque, and every gray tone in between 
uh, makes it a version of transparency between there. So things that are dark shadows are somewhat transparent, just like you would do if you're making a shadow through Photoshop that we've looked at in other lessons. So when I run multiply, it gets rid of the white areas and then shades in the materials that are below it, just like this. Now, as I said, the reason why we sort of separated the layers out is because um, I can now, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit, I can do various things to this layer independently for materials. One thing, for example, I might do, and you might take some time, is I could take the transparency down if I want to undertone the shadows a little bit, which it might be the look you want. You can turn it up if you want. Alternatively, you can usually make shadows darker if you want to like really be strong on shadows. So I could go to image and adjust uh, maybe something like brightness contrast on the shadow layer and sort of make it all darker. Actually, if I go to contrast, it's going to just make the shadows darker. So if I want to be bolder on my shadows, I can do that. I'm going to cancel this for this. Uh, it all depends on look. Like right now, I've sort of got a photo real look going, so being really bold on my shadows isn't the right thing to do. Being really light on my shadows isn't the right thing to do. It's to sort of match the shadows if I'm going to sort of go this way. But you might do a drawing that's mainly just like really bold and not photo real and has really strong shadows or is really focused on the materials, so maybe you have light shadows if that's sort of the, the image you want to get across. But for now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to soften my shadows just a little bit because I felt like they were a little strong. Um, but not too much, and I'll just leave it like this. What I'm going to do in the next video is I'm going to continue with shadows just a little bit longer because what can be interesting is to actually not even use black for your shadows. I'm going to show you how you might go about to, to do that. So, see you there.